the way I, I, I like to trade directionally and it's you know how to identify and capture profits from cycles so uh, I've got quite a bit to cover so let's get rolling here so first off I'd just like to say that the uh, yeah, uh, a webinar for educational purposes, uh, any stocks that I mention or futures does not constitute advice and should not be construed as recommendations. So what I'm going to go over here today is <clears throat> how to identify market cycles, how to clearly identify the highest probability trades, and uh, identify market tops and bottoms. We're going to go over trade setups and scanning for trades. So you know, basically, I'm an active trader for over 30 years. Um, I was executive vice president for one of the largest oil trading companies in the world, uh, and I ran their uh, crude oil trading and over-the-counter and all their futures and derivative trading for over 10 years uh, out of Bermuda. Uh, we were one of the first companies to trade actually over-the-counter options on crude oil, so I started trading options back in about 1987, I believe and it was on crude oil options. And then I went on to launch the institutional over-the-counter crude oil option brokerage desk uh, for the largest privately owned oil brokerage company in the world, PVM. So a lot of experience in trading, a lot of background in options as well. And uh, so, you know, what I'll be covering here today is just kind of the, the methodology I use for all my trading. And I like to, I do a lot of different types of trades. Um, you know, whatever's moving, you know, I'll pretty much trade. Um, you know, when it's earnings season, I'm looking at earnings trades using non-directional options. Uh, I love to use credit spreads, um, uh, option credit spreads, and directional type of trades. But one of the main things you need in trading um, is most of trading is going to boil down to direction. So you have to have some type of trading methodology or model that you can use to give you that direction. And, you know, what I like to do is, you know, day trade and swing trade and even longer term trades. It just depends on what the market's, you know, showing me. So that's what we're going to cover here today. Um, first off, trading market cycles. You know, all markets and time frames trade in cycles. Uh, markets will never go straight up and they never go straight down. And, you know, you know what you'll probably, you know, accustomed to seeing is that broad markets tend to have two to five week type cycles and then we'll trade sideways in channels for 70 to 80 percent of the time. So, you know, you need to be able to identify when you're in these type of trading environments. And, you know, some of the more common tools to use will be moving averages, you know, various price support resistance types of, of you know, market analysis. Fibonacci is excellent. And uh, then, you know, cycle indicators. So, you know, how to clearly identify the highest probability trades. Well, I'm a firm believer in using trading systems. Uh, so I recommend, you know, that you use a trading model or system, you know, where the rules are clearly defined, making it easier to implement to them. Now, a really good uh, trading system can be adapted and used across all major asset classes on a short-term, intermediate, or a long-term uh, basis. And so what I've, you know, come to realize is that from you know my reviewing and developing many different trading systems over my career that the ones that perform the best really have a medium complexity so they're not too simple and they're not too complex and uh, what I use is a rule-based system which uh, is called the power cycle trading model and the rules for this system are based around four powerful indicators uh, that define a price cycle change and that's done by identifying defined price range price volatility and change in price cycle um, and then uses price cycle momentum. So without momentum, you know, you can't get these shifts and cycles and trends to happen. So all this provides a set of guidelines which uh, allows trades to come to you. So whatever model you decide to use, know the guidelines and rules and stick to them. Now the end result of, of using a trading system in your trading is that you're going to start making decisions based on your model that you're using. So not the emotions, you know, that kind of get involved in your trading of fear and greed. And these type of emotions, you know, can hurt us all. You know, I've been there many times where, you know, that fear factor or that greed factor sabotages your trading results and you end up giving back a lot of your good profits. So to me, it's important to have a rule-based type system. And if you have that, then, you know, it gives you, you, you wait for your trades to set up 
and you don't chase trades and, and you actually start performing a lot better. So what we're going to also look at are, you know, my favorite. Um, I like to look at reversal type trades, cycle lows and cycle highs, trend price retracement trades, and volatility compression breakouts. So we're going to cover all these as well. Um, now, the other thing, though, I think it's very important, and I wanted to, you know, go over this with everybody here today because this market we're in pretty, right now is pretty crazy, kind of weird market, in my opinion. So uh, I want to also go over how to identify market tops and bottoms and a method that I use called top-down market technical analysis. And by this method of analysis, this will allow you as a trader or investor um, to look at first the macro big picture of a market and then take it all the way from that top point of view all the way down to the short term or intraday. So I call this top down. So we're going to go through that and review the current market cycles and see where we are. Uh, so you know this approach is really helpful to uh, look to see determine that big picture. You know, so a lot of times we're in there trading, we we can't see the forest for the trees. So if you step back and use some type of uh, analysis like this, uh, it will really help you to better identify potential new cycles that are on the horizon, uh, as well as get you set up to start taking advantage uh, of these potential new cycles that are developing, so you can uh, start allocating your capital. So the five time frames for this analysis uh, is what I call the macro market trend. And this is measured by the monthly time frame. And then we'll go to the long term market trend, which is measured by a weekly time frame. The medium term market trend measured by the daily time frame. The intermediate term trend measured by the hourly. And then what we use for the day trading, the short term trends were measured by minutes and ticks. So by using these various time frames, it allows you to, you know, trade in different type styles. You know, you can trade long-term trends using the macro long-term market trends, the medium-term trend daily I use for my, my swing trades, and then break it down into your day trades, minutes and ticks. So this is all kind of complements your trading if you can do this. And I start off the week, every week doing this, and uh, whatever system you use or methodology, I would highly recommend that you start trying to to entertain or put this into your current trading that you're doing and it'll help you see the bigger picture a lot a lot better. Uh, and then one more the free uh, resource. This is really excellent if you're not using it. It's called uh, Sector Spider SPDR uh, sec select sector spiders com. So what this does and we'll go through this is it helps you break down into the sectors, the various sectors of the S P. And then by doing this, you can go in and drill down inside each sector and find some, you know, great trade setups. So we'll, I'll show you, you know, how I incorporate this into my trading. So we'll go second, but it's a, it's a great uh, free resource. So check this out, and I'll show you how it's used or how, how I use it. We'll get into uh, my trading model, my charts, and uh, go from there. So I'm going to go through all these things that I just... Uh, highlighted and I'll go through it using you know my system I'll show you how I go about uh, trend trading day trading scanning for trades all those things that I mentioned so let me pull up my charts here and we'll start out the first thing we'll start out with is looking at that top-down market analysis so let's do that real quick so um, well, you know actually I'll, I'll just kind of lay out my system too because this is part of the uh, when we're doing this top-down market analysis, this is what I what I use. So basically, let me uh, pull up. What I like to do is use the Nasdaq. We'll use the Nasdaq today for this top-down, and then we'll also use the uh, S and P. So you can see we're having a, we're having a major divergence between the markets. We have two different types of markets. We have the S and P and the and the Dow, which are you know looking to make new highs, and then we've had the Russell and the Nasdaq. You know really. Uh, having a hard time, you know, getting legs back under to, to make any move at all, and they've actually entered into kind of a downtrend territory. So I'll go through and show you, you know, how I analyze this stuff first to get that big picture, and then we'll go in through to some detailed trade setups. So I'm going to put up NDX, which is, which is the CBOE 
deck. So we'll use this. Um, and then we're going to start out with the macro trend. So I use the month again. And then over on this chart here on the right chart, we're going to put up the SPX, which will be the S&P 500. So I like to monitor these two indexes, you know, for overall trend and uh, gives you market direction. So let me remove these, these levels here. And I'll just go through a brief explanation of my trading model. And this is a model that I put together, you know, I basically put this thing together, I guess, back in 2010. And, you know, you know, when you're developing trading systems, it's a, it's a work in prog progress because, you know, it's uh, something that's constantly changing. You get new different ideas that you want to incorporate. But basically, my models stayed the change or stayed the, the same uh, since I originally put it together back in 2010. And the way I came about putting my cycle model together is that, you know, it's based on my, my trading experience. So what I wanted was something that was, you know, not too complicated, not too simplistic, but something that could adapt and trade over any market, any asset class, and any time frame. So when you find that, that type of system that can have that capability, then you've got a, you know, a dynamic system that you can use for just pretty much any of your trading, even if you're uh, just from an investment standpoint uh, to, uh, you know, a, a trend trader to a swing trader to all the way down to the day trading. So this particular model I use for all of my trading and we just adapt it to the different uh, time frames. So uh, which is not too complicated because every market you know will trade have a different what I call um, a different kind of rhythm to it. They all trade in kind of different swings. So what you're going to notice here is you know my cycle model here. Let me put I need to add one more thing to it, so let me put in, um, hold on a second here. Let me see something. I want to get my support resistance in here too. So let's get this to monthly. Now I'm going to put in my support resistance. Let me get that in there real quick. Okay, so, um, so first off, let's go through macro, the big picture. So I go to a monthly time frame, and I've got the NDX here up on the, left chart and then I've got the SPX on the right chart. So what do you see? It's a pretty clear picture. You know, this is like if you're cruising over uh, you know, the US planet from outer space almost. You could you could kind of use that analogy. So if you look at this, you know, it's been a, just an amazing uptrend. So these are my cycle indicators. Uh, I've got three cycle indicators, cycle one, cycle two. Now these are strictly based on momentum. Uh, my cycle three is an overbought, oversold type situation uh, indicator, which uh, is not shown on the charts. Uh, so if you look at the macro big picture, uh, going back, this is monthly, so you can go all the way back here to, you know, here's 2009. So a couple key things you'll recognize here is that some of the moving averages really uh, respond, you know, fantastic to the markets. So I really like to use this 8 EMA. And this yellow dashed line is a 21 EMA moving average. So it adapts great for any time frame. So I use that. And then these are my cycle bands. The top band is yellow. The bottom band is yellow. I've got these co uh, color coded. So, you know, when the cycles start shifting, you know, they'll go, the slope changes. You'll see red. Uh, so these are my bands so that I follow. So, you know, when you get to the top of the band, you know, you're, getting kind of into cycle high territory. When you get to the bottom of the band, we get what we call cycle low. So everything goes up and down in cycles. So this helps you identify and actually see the cycles as they're you know occurring. And then within every cycle, you'll have periods of time when the market will consolidate, catch its breath, and then break back out. So I have also what I have incorporated in this model is what I call volatility compression, uh, a squeeze identifying um, portion of this model that's coded into it. So when you see a dot, this means a compression squeeze has started and it tells you the number of bars uh, that a, a particular asset is in a squeeze. So here just stands out SPX was in a squeeze back in July of 2012 for two months and then it broke out. Look at the trend that it had after it broke. So uh, my cycle momentum indicators, cycle one I call here, cycle two below, 
will help you see when the momentum's shifting to know the direction that the market's going to take. So by combining all these, you know, together, I can get a really clear picture, pretty accurate picture on where the markets are going to head next. So let's just go through here, see where we are now. And if you look here, it's pretty, pretty um, clear that we've been in a fantastic trend to the upside uh, ever since really the cycle indicators here re, re uh, ignited to the upside, and it's been a strong trend up. Um, you know, from December 2012, just a solid trend up. Now you can see now we've, we're pulling back on the NASDAQ, but you can look over here at the SPX or the S&P 500 and see that it's just, the trend is just not, not stopped. So, you know, we've got that divergence, we call this, when you have one index pulling back when the other's going up. Usually, you know, something's going to give. Uh, so far, nothing has given. So, but right now the macro trends are still up on both the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. Now the next thing we'll go to is the long-term trend, which is the weekly, so then we can start shifting down to see what's happening in a more current time frames. And here we've got the NASDAQ here on the weekly, or I call long-term time frame, and over on the right we've got the S&P futures, or S&P cash, uh, on the long-term. So what you're seeing here, <clears throat> is that we've had the NASDAQ come down and break this 21. So it hadn't broken the 21 EMA uh, for a long time. We can go back and look. And you can see my momentum indicators. When they started going to uh, flat here and then finally broke to the downside, you can see that the markets you know, started to uh, lose the momentum and the price action started happening really hard to the downside. Um, so you can see that on the S&P, though, the indicators are neutral because the cycle one indicator is down, but cycle two is up. Whereas over on the NASDAQ, they're both down. So you can see the momentum is shifted to the downside on the NASDAQ. The momentum is neutral on the S&P, which is keeping that S&P just kind of hovering here. Uh, now you're also, uh, I'm seeing here my squeeze indicator. So we're also in a volatility compression squeeze on both indexes. And that started on the 14th uh, of April and it started here on the S&P on the 14th. So what this is is a period of consolidation and we've been in this for one, two, three, four weeks. Now when we get into these comp consolidation periods, this is a period that you know I talked about a little earlier, 60 to 80 percent of the time you can be in a sideways kind of market. So you know there's plenty of action, price action here, but if you look on a long-term basis, we're in a sideways pattern. Uh, so the, then the next question will be, okay, which way are we going to break? We're in a compression squeeze. So will we break out of this to the upside with momentum or to the downside? Um, right now, if you look at the NASDAQ, the probability is for this to break actually to the downside. Uh, and when you look at the S&P, the probability is that it's, it's still neutral. It's not decided yet but the higher probability looks like it'll break to the upside. So again, we've got that con conflicting, confusing market. So right now what that tells me as a trader is to be careful and be cautious with what you're doing. Don't get overly long, don't go get overly short, and then when you are trading, you know, trade the weakness of the NASDAQ. If you're going to short, trade the strength of the S&P if you're going to go long. So it gives you clues as to, you know, how to perform in the market. So that's the long-term trend and then we want to go to the medium-term trend which will shift down to the daily on each asset class and then you see a lot more price action if you look at the um, NASDAQ you can see you know a downtrend so we're it's trying to recover the 21 EMA but the cycle indicators are still down, so the momentum hasn't shifted yet. Whereas you can see the S&P 500, uh, the momentum is basically neutral. So it's, it's really been trending sideways as well. So very conflicting, confused market. Uh, so then if you want to look at cycles, then you can also look down here to see we're in a downtrend. And the best way to measure, uh, to really vividly see that, is then put in some trend lines. So we can just draw a trend line here to, to, to map that out. 
And there's a proper way to draw trend lines, which I'm going to teach you guys here today. And this was taught to me by Tom DeMarc, who is probably one of the best known technicians out there uh, currently. Uh, and when I was running the trading desk um, back in Bermuda, he consulted for us. So he uh, helped develop a lot of our trading systems. We were one of the first groups, uh, uh, energy groups, to, to actually use quantitative trading models. So I've been you know, around trading models for over 20 years. So he helped develop a lot of the models that we were using. And this is the way that you draw a trend lines. So let me explain this to you. You can start using this today. So what you want to do is you want to look for what we call a swing high pivot point, which is marked here by these, see these parallel lines that are extending out? So this is automated too for my system support resistance, and it shows a swing high. So you want to take the first swing high, and you take that pivot point, so it's the point higher than the bar before, higher than the bar after. You draw your line from the right of the chart, then to your left, so most current price is more relevant than past price. Most you know, people tend to draw from the left or historical past price to the right. And if you do that, you have trend lines going all over the way, all over the place. But if you do it this way, this becomes systematic, and this will make it where you can do this. Um, you know, You can actually have this programmed in and make it automated so it makes it mechanical. So you take that pivot point to that swing high pivot right there, Draw your line, and then I'll extend this down to the right. So here's the trend line there. And then we can put a trend line below, and we can see we're getting a pennant formation forming. But you can see here the cycle is down, see? Whereas right here on the, uh, uh, the S&P futures, you know, that cycle really is more to the upside. Um, so we're, gonna, we're getting in a pennant formation, which uh, is a a formation for breakouts. So let's you know put that in. So here again there's that pivot low. So we'll take that point and take it to that point there. Now I'm assuming this will be the low of the day, but if this for some reason if we sold off into the day and that came down here, then this would negate this as a swing pivot low, but I'm just going to use it for right now. So let me extend the lines here so you can see that trend line. So now you can start seeing that we're starting to, you know, compress in tighter and tighter, and sooner or later we're going to have a either break to the upside or break to the downside. Now we can do the same thing over here, and there's more potential here. You can see here the swing high, swing pivot high there, and here we almost broke to the upside today. Uh, but so let's put that in. Here's your pivot high. Here's that swing pivot high. So put that in there. Let's extend it to the right. So here's your trend line above on the S&P. We can do the same down here below. So you know this helps to make your system, you you trader, your trading or investing at more systematic. So we're going to extend this right. Okay, so now we've kind of identified the market, the range where it's in. So we can see we've, we've been in this downtrend. You can just look at the market here and look, and that's down. You can look at this market, and it's, you know, sideways. So it doesn't take, I mean, it's pretty clear. And then, you know, what you need to, to shift markets up or down is you need momentum. So right now, there's a lack of momentum based on my cycle model to any direction here on the S&P. So what is it doing? It's just going sideways. The uh, NASDAQ, the cycle momentum is shifting to the downside. I mean, it, it shifted to the downside here. You can see we have this big sell-off. And then we came back up on this reversal bar day. And we're back kind of trending sideways, but the trend is down. We're still below the 21 EMA, whereas here we're 21. So what this tells me as a trader, um, I want to probably look at shorting and not really, you know, being very selective if I do go along anything in the NASDAQ, but preferably find those stocks that are good candidates for shorts versus the, the S&P, you know, you'd still be looking to trade to the long side. 
so then you can drill down within the the markets to find out you know what uh, potentially you should be trading so that's when I'll show you real quick the after I do the, the next time frame the next time frame is your hourly time frame that's what I use for the intermediate term and that's this is what I'll use for swing trading the hourly along with the uh, daily but you can see here that today we had a nice push early up into new highs but what's happening now we're pulling back and the cycle model you can see the momentum has shifted all the way to the downside so we're ba basically just kind of hanging in there now these support levels you're seeing here these are the weekly last week's close high and low so I have these in my model too these are automated so it's a lot of good information that I can see quickly so now to see what you should be trading then here's a real simple um, free resource for you and I'll show you real quick it's a really cool little table to use so like I'm saying that the S&P is still kind of in that trend up and it's still you know looking to possibly break to the upside but it's also cycling sideways so if you're going to look to, to buy anything then you know look into the S&P so here are the sectors this is that select sector spider .com, okay so you pull that up and let me just show you how you get into this thing so it's a really cool little tool so you come over here and it's got every sector of the S&P broken down so you've got energy utilities technology basic materials um, staples discretionary industrial healthcare financial so you've got all these sectors and then what you can do is you can come over here to tools right there go to sector tracker <clears throat> and then it breaks it down to the sectors and then you can see you know this is just today you can see what's up what's up what's down etc so then what you want to do is you go out to five days you can see what's been moving you go out to one month see what's been moving go out to three months see what's been moving six months and what you're noticing here one thing that really stands out is that energy has been moving so it's had a big move it may be coming to an end but if you've been looking out here you know a month ago you would see that it was moving up consumer discretionary was starting to go down and it just gives you a an area to identify what's hot what's moving and then you want to go with those type of sectors that are moving right if you're going to go long go with the wind to your back versus going to a sector that doesn't have any momentum such as that discretionary and then you pick and scan for the stocks within that sector so that gives me an area to look for very stock trade setups uh, so then the cool thing is for energy we'll put on five days here then you just click on that and it goes drills down and shows you all the energy stocks that make up that sector XLE so you know and then you can see what's moving that particular day the five past five days what's had the biggest movement or the past one month or past three months so a very good tool for scanning for looking for trade ideas and then what I do is I, I come in and I can load these this sector into my scanner that I have modeled uh, for my trading system and then I can have it scan these looking for certain trade setups that I'm looking for so it's a really great way to um, identify trades and this is a systematic approach kind of a pro progression for your trading so you do that top-down analysis identify the sectors that are weak or strong and then if you want to trade long you go into here and look for those stocks that are um, the strongest and look for setups based on your scan now if you want to look for the ones that are the weakest then you, we can see that uh, consumer discretionary has been down hard technology and then you can drill down into here and see the technology stocks and you can see which ones uh, are the strongest to the weakest so it's a great tool to use so that is again sector spdr.com so you know if we're looking at you know just overall 
a lot of this movement on the Dow and the S&P has basically been off of energy stocks. So the, the second step then is to, you know, after you identify, okay, now where do I find some trade ideas? Then, you know, then the next things into play are the types of trades. And so what I like to look at next, and I'll show you the different types of trade setups that I like to um, incorporate in, into my trade. Uh, so let me go here. Let me switch this. I'm going to put this here and link these together. Now, the types of trades that I like to look for um, are reversals, uh, then cycle lows and highs, and then uh, retracement type trades where a trade will you know, be in a trend and retrace, and then a trade setup where you have a what we call or what I call a volatility compression squeeze where you've got this, this is a perfect example right here where you have a consolidation period and it breaks. So let's just, I'll pull this up and show you real quick while, while it's here and then I'll go through the different types of trade setups. Um, but just looking at the NASDAQ, you can see here, this is on an hourly. So I like to use the hourly, let me do something else, and the daily for swing trades. Okay, so let me, let me put this back. And then we'll make this um, we'll make this the S and P as well, and we can make this. I'll take. I'll tell you. I'll make this the QQQ, since most of you are probably trade the QQQ if you're trading the Nasdaq. So, so what we're going to have here is I'm going to put up the daily. <clears throat> And I'm going to put up here the hourly. So I like to trade when I'm looking at a swing trade uh, possibilities. I, I will use, you know, these two time frames. Plus I'll look at the weekly. I'll look at everything, but these are the two that I monitor the most. Okay. So what we're seeing here is I wanted to show you that compression squeeze back here. You see this right here? This this started. You can see. We started moving sideways on the queues back in March, right? And my cycle indicator said, hey, there's no momentum, but look, we were just trending sideways. So something's got to give, you know. It can't just keep going sideways. It's like trying to hold a baby or a puppy, you know. You, they'll only sit, sit, so, sit so long, you know, still, and then they're going to have to go jump out of your lap or, you know, they're going to fall down. So here's a compression squeeze. You can see, so momentum indicators are down. So what does that tell me? Well, the probability for this to break is to the downside. You know, I don't have to think about it too much. So I look here, I see it started a squeeze here. The market was trending up. Let's just take the daily so you can see a bigger picture of this. So the market had been trending up, and then it just ran out of, ran out of juice. So um, this is just full of really great trade setups. But uh, first off, I'll show you this squeeze. So what you're seeing here is that the market trended up, had a really nice, see that trend, everything cycled up, momentum indicators popped above zero, and uh, the first tr trade setup right here, this is actually what we call a cycle low. Cycle low trade right there, beautiful. So market came down hard, sold off hard. You can see my cycle boundaries were, you know, totally extended, price extended through them. And then what happens? You see that momentum shifts. Momentum shifts two, cycle two, and then it goes above zero. So it's saying, okay, you know, this is the bottom. So so look for your trade setup. Do you want to get in? What I'll be doing here is selling uh, bull put credit spreads, buying some directional options, take advantage of that up move. My cycle indicators say there's good momentum. We start breaking the 8 EMA, the 21, that 21 pops, you're back into an uptrend. And then when you have that 8 cross the 21, look at the acceleration. Now this green line here is my 50 simple moving average, which is another key moving average, and it's sloped really hard to the upside. So it's green when it's sloped up, turns red when it starts sloping down, now it's sloping down. So we've got a negative trend. So I use these moving averages to set my trend. So now we're a nice trend up on the cues. Then we come up here and look what happens. As soon as we get up here, what happens down here? My cycle indicators, 
they say it's run out of juice, run out of energy. So we had a great burst of energy up here. Now it's running out of energy, breaks to the to the 21, pulls back up. You know, this is tough trading, it's chop, chop, chop. But what you can do here as an option trader, when you get into this type of chop up here, then it's the perfect environment to sell, start selling bear call credit spreads. You know, one, one and a half standard deviations above. And if you want, you could even do a um, probably an iron condor and sell a bull put credit spread the same distance, one, one and a half standard deviations below. Let it chop back and forth, time decay, boom, boom. Make premium, collect premium, put it in your pocket. So this gives me the direction and the indication of what kind of trades to put on. So when I get up here, you know, momentum's coming off. I'll probably just do a bull put credit spread here and probably not do the, the bear call. I mean, the bull put credit spread, not do that one because this thing could roll back over. So I'll just be selling usually the bear call credit spreads up here. And then what happens? Then you get into squeeze. And then when I get into compression squeeze, it shows based on my model, the rules in my model, it identified it right here on the 11th of March. So it's day one, it's in there two days, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 days in that squeeze based on my model, the rules that I have in my model, indicators were all down. So what direction will it probably break? Well, the probability, if, if you come over here and you're just looking at this in real time, I mean, you know, simulated time, you can see this, I can see my model, price actions up here doing nothing, but my momentum shifted, it's down, it's not going anywhere. So the probability is very low that this thing's going to make another break to the upside. Now that I'm in a squeeze, I'm asking myself, okay, well, which direction is it going to break? The probability based on my indicators then is to the downside. So trading is just about probabilities. There's no perfect system for perfect traders, just about probabilities and trying to measure and get the best probability for your trades. So then here, I like to use options because it gives me either better probability of success. So I start setting up to sell more bear call credit spreads. And then I can even break it down to, say, an hourly time frame here. And I can look at, you know, getting more precise and buying puts or a put spread. So then, look at this. Then I've got this also coded in for to, to show me any type of engulfing candle patterns. So I get that arrow pop up. And that's it. Boom. I know that we're probably going to head to the down and then look what happens. So, so within my model, I have, you know, candlestick patterns um, also programmed in and then this compression squeeze breaks. Now the other key ingredient to uh, a trend break is to have your trend lines in. So what I'll also have, just like I showed you earlier for this, this is what we call a cycle high, cycle high in a volatility compression breakdown. I'll have my trend lines in. So what am I going to do? Here's a cycle low right here. And then I'm going to look for the next cycle low, which is coming down here. I'm going to put a trend line in. And you'll see how specific you can identify the trend break. So here's a trend. Well, here's also a cycle low right there to here. So there's a trend line I'm going to draw. And then we'll have another trend line. So these are all things I do systematically to really identify what potentially can happen. So then put that trend line in. So let's extend those and then it can, you can really see precisely what's going to happen. It takes a lot of the guesswork out and you don't have to over analyze things. You just, you know, then you just, it, it just boils down to, you know, setting up your trades. So let's extend this right. So look at that. Yeah, that engulfing bar, boom, that trend line breaks, breaks the, the moving averages, just gets annihilated. Then it has that knee-jerk reaction, comes back up, you know, gets over the 21, stays up there two days. It looks like it might be, you know, starting to shift back to the upside. But look, my cycle two indicators are still down, so I'm not going to fall for this trap. You know, I want my indicators to be up, not down, to go long. And it fails again. Another engulfing bar there. And back down she goes. So where are we now? Well, my cycle indicators are both down. 
So I'm not going to get trapped into, you know, a relief rally. Uh, I'm going to be looking for, if I'm going to do anything, I'd be looking for shorts. I'm definitely not going to buy. And that's the way to play it. That, well, that's the way I play it. And by having this information, it, a lot of times it will keep me out of trouble and it will put me in a good position uh, to win. Now, so that's the daily, and then I'll take it and I'll break it down to the hourly to really kind of help me finesse my trade that I want to get into. So you can see here, you know, on an hourly time frame, if you'd gone short right there, you can put your trend lines in, boom, great sell-off. So, you know, that's a, those are two different, those are two different type trades. Uh, you know, well, we covered basically here just off the queues. So there's just so many trade setups for anything that you put up. So here is your cycle low. Here's a cycle high plus a compression squeeze breakdown. And here's a, you know, here's a retracement trade. And all the retracement trade is is, you know, just retracing to a major moving average. So it came into the 21 here. And then, you know, if I'd had this on a, a one hour time frame, it would have showed you the momentum shifting back up. So that's, you know, basically a retracement trade there. So a um, couple other uh, trades that I'll show you. Let me see. I've got a, here's, you know, I was just looking through some old trades and stuff, but to show you how beneficial this can be for your trading, you know, we were talking about energy. Let's take a look at the XOP. So I like to, to follow the ETFs. They'll give you a lot of um, heads up on what's starting to move. So for example, so I'll, um, so I'll have the ETFs uh, in a scan. I, I put this and I'll show you my scanner in just a second. Uh, so I'll have the ETFs uh, on my scanner. And so here's an energy ETF. So I'll have XOP, um, XLF, you know, all the major um, um, sectors for ETFs. And what I'm doing is I'm scanning, looking for any potential uh, trade setups. And then if I see it on the ETF, then I can drill down and look for the best stocks within the ETF. So I can either play trade the ETF or I can drill down into it and see what stocks make up that ETF and then see if there's a stock that might be better for the trade than just the ETF itself. So if I'm looking at the XOP, uh, the thing I like to monitor is the weekly as well as the, so if you get a trend shift on a weekly, then it's a long-term trend. You can have a longer-term trend. So if we look at the XOP, you know, what you can notice here just is these compression squeeze set up. So if you look, if you look back, I mean, this, this is an ETF that really responds well to that consolidation phase and then a break to the upside or break to the downside. So you can see here going back to July 2013, we had this compression squeeze for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 weeks. So for a whole year. And then what happens? So, you know, things you, they don't fire off all the time. So, but it keeps you patient. And then when you see it, you better take action if you want, because it could be a fantastic trend. So if you look here, so XOP, you know, on the weekly, then fired. And that was August 2013. So it fired long. Okay, it did retrace, but what did it do? It held the 21 period. Cycle indicators were flat. Momentum was still up on cycle two. Then it shifted back up. We had another small squeeze here, and then it just cycled. It was a fantastic move to the upside. So then when you see, you know, here's another squeeze. Here, here it did it again, XOP. So it, back in January um, of this year, so it was in a squeeze one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight weeks. And then it fired long and had another great trend to the upside. So then you break down, you can go inside XOP. We'll see what's making up XOP. Well, one stock to look at would be, say, Exxon. And you can see Exxon, just a beautiful cycle low trade. Exxon's really been trading well. 
if you look at Exxon, you can see these cycles. So here's this really nice cycle low on Exxon. So here's an engulfing candle. Cycle indicator shift to the upside. Beautiful trend up. I mean, that, I mean, it's just clear as day. So, you know, using candles. So what I do is I will use my cycle one, cycle two, and I'll go in that direction. So, you know, looking at the direction, then it's up. So then I'm looking for the trade setup. So then I'll look at the candle. So if you look at the candle pattern here, you've got that doji, you've got an engulfing bar, you've got that, you know, additional, and then you've got another doji there. So, you know, then the cycle indicators are up. So jump in. And then it's breaking the moving averages. Up she goes. So that was a beautiful trade setup there on Exxon. Now, the other side of that is, okay, then what about short trade setups? Well, here are a couple of those. But you have to have, you know, some type of way, you have to have these on your watch list because you have to be ready for them, right? So, uh, so make a watch list of whatever you like to trade. So use this sector tracker and go in with that find out what sectors are doing well, what sectors are doing bad, and if you're more inclined you like to short, then, you know, put together a watch list for potential shorts. If you're a long player, put together a watch list for potential longs, and then monitor those particular stocks in your watch list and be ready. Now, the good thing about, you know, having a system is that it gets, gives you time to get ready and then you can plan your trade. So this is LinkedIn. If you look at LinkedIn, you can see that here's a compression squeeze and it broke to the upside a really great move to the upside right look at the look at the momentum just shifted straight up boom beautiful trend up held that 8 EMA never pulled back once until here to the 21 now look what happens You're starting to see cracks here all over the place so it's still up here on the highs and this is a weekly time frame okay so uh, first look at the weekly and so you can see LinkedIn had a beautiful move to the upside long-term trend up but then what it runs out of gas right so cycle one starts going down but it's just it's chopping here but it's coming down to that 21 testing it testing testing so something's going to give the cycle indicators are down so when that happens on a weekly then it tells me okay if I want to play this thing to the short side you know I can buy some uh, options some puts but if I buy them I better go out you know uh, maybe two to three months out uh, because this could consolidate sideways and if you buy too early you know what, what's going to happen to you, your options they're just going to decay in time or the other thing you can do is start selling you know bear call credit spreads you know every time you get a move back up into a major moving average you sell one one and a half standard deviations above and just milk that every time so you can see LinkedIn has just been a perfect candidate, you know, for everything, every time it moves up to, to reshort it. So then, you know, shift it to the daily time frame. And so then you can see here that every time it got to the 21, it exceeded it there, exceeded it there. But what happens? It, it, it eventually is sucked right back down into the 21 and then below it. And you can also see that the key moving average this red line here that's the 50 simple and look at the slope on it it's red so until that starts shifting up the trend in my opinion is down and then you've got the 21 so on this particular type trade strategy uh, what I look for is um, you know not to sell when it's on the lows because what tends to happen is you know when you get down these lows you get these knee-jerk reactions up which can give you a lot of pain but you have to be patient, wait for it to get back into the major moving averages, and then take your trade there. So, you know, right now, you know, it's it's still showing lack of um, strength. Uh, but then you need to measure, go back and measure, you know, where it is in time, too, because you don't want to be selling at the bottom. So, you know, keep track of your big picture uh, time frame here. So here's LinkedIn, just since we're on it. But, you know, when it gets back down to about 121, down into here, then you're, you can see a lot more support. Right now, you know, still not that much support. So if you take this from low to high, you can even, you know, put in your FIB levels. 
could put fib levels a couple of places first where it broke to the upside. So we can go back to the, well, we'll just take it from the low here, just the big macro picture all the way up here. And you can see here, whoa. So what I'm seeing here is that LinkedIn's coming down to the 618 retracement. So right here, I would not be shorting it because the 618 to me is one of the most key Fibonacci levels. So LinkedIn coming down here, uh, I definitely wouldn't be shorting at 618. If it bounces back up and then fails, that's where you short it. Um, so that's going to be some support for LinkedIn. So just you know, use your FIB levels for this kind of uh, analysis as well. So let's take a look. But yeah, so see here, this is actually where it broke out as well on LinkedIn, just to to analyze this a little further. So it broke out right about in here at about 127. So this is going to be start to get some some buyers interested, you know, just because of the support levels in here that you see. So that's a kind of a quick analysis on LinkedIn. Um, now the other thing I wanted to um, cover is uh, just real quick target analysis. I don't know if you guys use Fibonacci extensions and things like that for your targets, but I find it very helpful. Um, and let me just show you a good example. You know, when markets start moving, you're you know you, you could get fearful about oh it's just you know skies falling, etc. But if you start you know working with Fibonacci levels for support resistance, it'll really help you identify key levels of supply or demand. And then it'll also help you when you're into areas that are uncharted waters. It'll also help you to identify target zones uh, because these these numbers really are amazing. They work. They really work. I've uh, been following for years, and I'm just amazed just how accurate they can be. So here's just a real good one. I'll show you real quick. Is Apple? Now Apple, you know everybody knows it just went through the roof. Uh, let me get rid of this. So the, the question is, okay, where is it going to go? Well, you know, using Fibonacci price extensions, it pulled it. So let me just show you that real quick. So we were in the trading room, and, you know, some, somebody was asking, well, where is Apple going to go? And I said, well, it's going to go to the 1272 extension, and look where it stopped, right there at the 1272 extension. So really, basically, it's very simple. All you do is you come back to the prior major on this, I'm using a weekly to get a long-term picture of where the target is. And here's your here's your high right there. You can see you see that parallel line. So there's your swing high pivot. That was the, the prior major swing high. And then you go down to your swing low, which was right here. So these are price extensions. So what it's doing, it's measuring that move that move from the high to the low. And then your Fibonacci levels. You've got that 100% retracement there. And then your next move is the 1272, which is a, a, a ratio that uh, a lot of traders use. And you can see how it nailed it. So there are a lot of people watching the 1272 extension. And when it got there, they were unloading their shares or their options on Apple. And it didn't uh, get much more fall through up until, you know, it goes to the round number 600, but it pulls back. So these are very helpful. So start, you know, using, a, you know, highly recommend that you use. Uh, your fib levels as much as you can and, and start you know doing some work there so those are you know the one two seven two extension and then the other key one again I, I mentioned was a six one eight so when you get through the six one eight retracement then there's high probability it's going to go back to that one hundred percent and then after that the high probability that the target the one two seven two will be hit so that's uh, looking at Apple to give you an idea uh, on how to use extensions um, so that being said, now the next thing I'll show you the day trading, and maybe we'll see some trades set up here real quick. Um, pull up my day trading uh, model here. Now this is the same model. I just have different time frames set. So when I'm day trading, so we trade a lot of NASDAQ futures uh, during the day for day trading. It's a really good. It's a really good futures to trade. It's got a nice rhythm to it. <clears throat> you can see what do you see here? You can pretty much see a really beautiful cycle low. So, 
see the market sold off hard. So that you know you can look up here, look for the short. So what do you see here? You can see cycle one goes negative, two goes negative. So I'm going to be looking for short. And then what I'm doing is I'm looking at these candles and I'm looking at the major moving average, which is my 50 simple. And so when it breaks that 50, that's where you go short. Or that's where I would go short. Then here, you had a reversal back up. It tried to retest to the upside, mm -hmm. but the indicators are all down. So you could even get back in right here at break below these lows. And then it comes down into the prior day's close and just gets crushed to the downside. This is a prior day's midpoint, pivot point. These are all automated. Goes back through the 382 on the daily. And this, this is a what we call a parabolic SAR indicator. It's a cycle indicator. You can see how the trend is just trended straight down below that indicator. And then look here, it reverses. So what are you seeing down here? First off, I look at my five minute time frame and I can see that the cycle momentum has shifted. It stopped moving to the downside and moved up. Had a green bar on the candle, so it goes up here. I look over here at the crosshairs. So the five minutes, you know, lagging, but right here I can see my indicators shifted back up to the upside right here. So they're both up. Here's a long. You can see these candles. These are positive uh, candles. So green engulfing, uh, an inverted hammer, another uh, reversal bar, and then you get in right here on the break, that next candle up. Indicators are both up, so it has momentum, and there was a nice little day trade for 35.30. <clears throat> Back up here into that pivot. Pivot. Uh, this is called a, a the prior day's um, pivot point, and you can see the momentum start shifting down, so, you know, get out. Uh, that's good for 35.30. 3530. That's three full points, which is not too bad. So with the NASDAQ futures, um, each point is uh, four ticks. Every tick is five dollars. So that's um, dollars a contract times three points. Um, <clears throat> that's eighty, ninety, a hundred dollars a contract right there. So not bad for a quick little day trade. So that's how you know we're using this model, you know, each and every day. For trading whatever Nasdaq futures, and you can see here, you know it comes down. This is another good uh, trade set off on a retracement. You can see it comes down to the close. This prior day's close, which is always going to be some support. You can see the indicator shifted back up here, had a bounce, came back down again, engulfing candle, bounce back up. So you can see how you can play these support levels, you know, for your day trading. So by having all this stuff automated you know, it makes your decisions a lot faster. So that's uh, taking a look at it using the NASDAQ uh, 100 futures. And then, you know, earlier today, we had a lot of great trade setups early uh, in the morning. So start trading, the trading room opens, my trading room opens at 8 central, and, you know, we kick off 8.30, but you can see right here early, we had the market came down and then the cycle indicator shifted back up. We had these nice candles here. We had it go back above the 15 EMA. So there was, here was your first buy signal right there. Breaks above the 50 symbol. This was another buy setup. This was a really good one too because it retraces back into the 50, holding that 15 EMA. So then the 15 crosses the 50. You get a great burst. This was a really good long setup. Burst to the upside. And, you know, finally stalls out up here. The indicators are going negative, loses momentum. What does it do? Knowing your support resistance is key. So here's your prior day's close. It comes back into that support. So you never want to short this support, you know, measure support level the first time down or second time down. Usually it's going to give you a little bounce, which it did. That gave another buy signal. See the indicators went plus. Nice candle formation there jump back in. Here's a compression squeeze.
So here's a volatility compression squeeze on the 200. This is a 200 tick chart. So see how it consolidates sideways, holding the 50 simple moving average, which is sloped up. So this gives you another buy signal right here. See cycle one, cycle two shifts up. You got a squeeze, so you buy here on this candle there, pop up here, pulls back into the 15, goes higher. So these are <clears throat> ways that we use the same model, but just using different time frames. Uh, and also, you know, it's really good. Uh, I like to trade gold using the same thing. And I like gold because I like to trade those compression squeeze type setups on gold. Uh, day trade those. Those can be fantastic trade setups. Here's, here's one right here. You can see the compression squeeze here it started uh, on gold. This was at about 1230. Gold had sold off. And then we get in the compression squeeze. So what I'll do is I'll wait. I'll see my indicators are up, so the probability is going to break to the upside. Then I'll put an OCO order, one cancels the other, and I'll put it in, you know, above where I think that squeeze would trigger. So right here at big 1289. So I put the OCO order in about, you know, 1290 or something right there. And then gold has a tendency to really have big, nice pops. So you know, I just sit the order there, and get when it gets hit, I have it set for 10 ticks. Boom. $100 contract fast or 15 ticks. That was a trade 1289, call it 1290, goes straight up to 1291. That was almost two full points. So it's a great way to uh, use use it for um, gold or crude or anything. Here's take a look at crude on a day trade basis. And natural gas can be really good as well. Um, so here's crude on a crude compression squeeze breakdown, boom. Let's take a look at natural gas. I haven't looked at natural gas today. Natural gas is a crazy one to trade. Ooh, that was a great breakdown there on the natural gas at 11. See this compression squeeze here? And then what are the indicators doing? They're down. So the probability is for this thing to break down. So then you put a trend line in if you want to just really get it precise. So here's your Here's your, um, we use that pivot low and that pivot low. Well, we use that one right there. Just showing you the way I set things up. So I know it's in a squeeze. I'm looking for a breakout or a breakdown. I want to know when to get in. Have my trend line in there. Indicators are down, so it doesn't have any momentum. It breaks that 15 EMA, I'm in. Boom. Or wait for it to break that 50 with that trigger and look at the trigger. That was a huge trade to the downside. So that's you know, you know, using a trading model and how that can be very beneficial to you. Uh, so I highly recommend having some methodology that you use that that that's systematic. So you don't have to, you know, think too much. You need to have a system that you can rely on so you can make quick decisions. Uh, especially if you're day trading, but even for swing trading, because there can be so, so much conflicting information. Um, so what I'd like to uh, show you guys is, you know, my trading club. See so if you're interested in that, I'll show you the link to it. Uh, let me pull that up. And then, then I usually, you know, in day trading, trading, I pretty much use futures, but when I am, you know, swing trade or anything else, uh, I'm an option guy, so I'm going to use different option strategies, you know, credit spreads or directional options. So use, you know, a combination of those things. Uh, and so, you know, what I have is a uh, trading club. So I'd like to give you uh, an offer for this. It's a great deal, $7. So you can see that the first thing. And Jan, if you could put that in, I'd appreciate it. See, I can actually put it in for you. Here's the link. It's a... Um, uh, it's a lot of great um, information there for you. Um, yeah, thank you. So let me see if it works for me too. Yeah. Yeah, so it works. So anyway, what you get in this is my, uh, you get $7 for 30 days. And I have an interactive trading room where I use this trading model every day. So I'm in there every day from, I open the room up at 8 central. 
and then you know I'll go through the markets you know I'll do some of this analysis that I showed you today I'll see what areas are you know really strong and moving if I see something unusual you know I'll highlight that and then you know I'll go through trade setups so I'm a, usually I'm trading the Nasdaq 100 for futures morning because it's just provides you some pretty good trade trade opportunities I'm going to pull that up now kind of keep an eye on it and you know once you get used to a certain um, certain thing to trade um, you know, you keep going back to it because you kind of understand the rhythm. Um, so, you know, I tend to trade the same thing over and over. Now, oh, one more thing I wanted to show you, my scanner. And plus you can get all these things at discounted prices, which is a huge benefit. Now, this is my scanner. Um, so I'll show you both. But this trading club, so everything you can get in it is... $7 for the first 30 days. After 30 days, it's $97 a month. So you'll get my uh, daily market outlook video. I put that out every day. So if I see, you know, whatever the market's doing, that video comes out each day and tells you the market situation and any particular swing trades I'm noticing or any other interesting trades. I send out alerts, uh, email alerts when I see certain setups that look, you know, very interesting that for reversals or uh, breakouts. Uh, we do a weekly question and answer Q&A every week on Tuesdays. So it's a group Q&A. So you can come in there. And we'll go over all your questions. And then you get discounts on all my programs and my trading tools. So this is my tr my scanner. And, you know, this scanner is um, also for Thinkorswim. I modeled this for the Swinker uh, based on my trading model. And what it does, it, it scans for volatility compression breakout so right on this particular scan I've got it set to the NASDAQ 100 I can go in here at the thinkorswim and I can go into anything that they have and this is real time so I can go into futures forex um, gap ups you know NYMEX whatever and then I can do my personal list so I have my ETFs and all my different quotes there and then I can scan it so it's a real time scan so you can see here you know what's in a squeeze. So right now you can see um, Akamai, yeah this still includes the live interactive trading room, it, it all that. So yeah thanks for putting that up. Um, so you can see here this is the NASDAQ 100 I'm screening and you can see everything that's in a squeeze and how long it's been in a squeeze. So here's uh, CA uh, just started in a squeeze one day. It's the, the direction is to the downside based on my model. Then you can see it, what's triggered out of a squeeze. Here's ATVI. Uh, today we had L A L X A L X N just triggered to the downside. And then I can you know do this also for a weekly, monthly, hourly, four hours, sixty minutes, all the way down to one minute. And then I can sort. You know, and so it's a really great tool. So what I will do is, you know, I'll have my ETFs up. And then when I see an ETF in a squeeze, let me see if I can pull those up. It takes a little time to set. Uh, then I can see if an ETF's in a squeeze, then I will drill down and see what stocks are in it. I can pick out the best stocks to trade. But here's a real quick, uh, let's see what just triggered here on a daily. Wow, weekly squeeze. Look at these things that are in a weekly squeeze. Baidu, see Baidu's just been crushed. It's in a weekly squeeze. So you know you join the trading club and you can get access. You can get this scanner for 150 bucks. You get my trading model for a really good price. I'm always having different specials on that. Uh, so just a really good, uh, all in all, good club to be in with some other good traders that you're going to be able to interact with. Uh, here's Baidu. Let me show you Baidu here real quick. Uh, that's the wrong one. So I have this then linked to my charts. And Baidu is in a squeeze on the daily and also on the weekly right here. So Baidu is one that I like to short, you know, and the probability is it's going to head lower. So that's a really good one to keep an eye on for your future shorts. So uh, that's, you know, pretty much what I look at doing, you know, how I trade. 
and here's that link again. Uh, it's a great club, so take advantage. PowerCycleTrading.com forward slash ale for the pub and go from there. Um, yeah, we call I call out NASDAQ day trades in the room. So, um, you know, that's something that I, I'm in there from 8 o'clock central until uh, 9.30 or 10, calling out trades, and then I'm you know, off doing some other things, and then I'll come back in usually for the close. Yeah, you can get the cycle indicators too. Um, if you join the club, then I'll let you know more about that. Um, with my day trading, you know, I ba basically uh, my amount I look for to make 250 to 500 dollars uh, per day, just on these Nasdaq futures day trades, and then the swing trades and everything else. You know, are just a totally different, different thing. So, but it it um, it all adds up. It all adds up to be really good. And I love to do credit spreads, so I, I do a lot of focus on you, you know how to do credit spreads and focusing on credit spreads to you know put that probability in your favor. Yeah, for the longer term trends like swing trades or longer term trends, I'm going to always use options. It just gives you so many more um, options. You know, you've got the leverage, you've got the Cost, you've got the fine risk, you know, you lower your capital cost, your at risk cost. So um, I love to do credit spreads. And that's a big thing that I that I teach. Okay, well thank you so much for having me here today. My time's up and I wish all you guys the best of luck and uh, thank you very much for for letting me talk to you for an hour and fifteen minutes. So join my club and you'll see more of me. So have a great day.